Hey, what's up? My name is Alex, I'm a music producer. Today I want to talk about three amazing video game soundtracks from games that you probably have not played. And the reason why I say this is that what I've noticed is the video game music in general is mind-blowing. Personally, whenever I hear a soundtrack of whatever game, I always find so many things to be inspired by as a composer myself, but I notice that sometimes certain soundtracks don't get as much popularity as they deserve. And I believe one of the reasons for it is that probably many people have not played the game which those soundtracks belong to. So today I want to shine a light on three of them which I really liked. First one is by composer Austin Wintory, the same guy who made the legendary soundtrack for Journey. Do you remember? Apotheosis. <laughs> Yes, that amazing soundtrack that went viral for a few years. I have to say, it's still one of my favorite works from Austin, but he composed a new soundtrack for a game called The Pathless, where he did something incredibly amazing. You may notice it as soon as you hear the first few notes from this soundtrack. This right here is something I love about video game music. It encompasses cultures that you might not hear often in mainstream music. I mean, when is the last time you heard Tuvan Throat singing in a mainstream pop song? I don't think that happened very often. And what Austin did instead is hired this ensemble, I think they're called the Alash Ensemble from the Republic of Tuva, and he gave them the entire spotlight. The man went and just jammed with them and recorded the whole jam session where he just let them do whatever. And then out of that, he used that material to craft the pathless soundtrack around it. And that's why this soundtrack sounds so unique and so spiritual. That is a very beautiful way to portray a culture that is not your own without incurring into cultural appropriation. He just let them shine and be the stars of the soundtrack and then he just masterfully crafted something that could fit inside a game. When I talked about mainstream music not doing this, I did not mean that mainstream music cannot do this. In fact, you can take this beautiful throat singing from Tuva and turn it into a club banger. So I did just that and it sounds like this. spirituality of the Tuvan throat singers and the orchestra plus the mainstream banger sound is like an astral journey that you all take together while at a rave party. That's kind of what I feel like when I listen to this. So Austin unknowingly wrote a spiritual banger. Soundtrack number two I want to talk about is from the same legendary woman who composed this. Yes, I'm talking about the composer for Celeste, Lena Rain. She made a soundtrack for a new game called Shikori, which I haven't played, but I heard the whole soundtrack. The mind-blowing thing about this one is that it's like 60 tracks. The amount of diversity in styles that are in this soundtrack is amazing. For example, one of the first tracks is this one. <laughs> It sounds so happy and so like innocent and beautiful and chill, but after a while you get to certain pieces like this other one, which is insane. So freaking dark, like synthesizer and stuff. It's like Cyberpunk 2077. That's crazy. And this is in the same game as the other chill, happy soundtrack. And the thing I love about this one, which is called probably Ancient Evil, is that it hides so many genres inside it. For example, it sounds like a Justice song. So if we add some super gnarly distorted bass and some groove, this is what we get. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
But not only that, not only we have this level of darkness in such a cheerful game, but also there's a little bit of melancholy in it in the melodies. Listen to the bass. <laughs> That sounds Latin as heck, like a flamenco thing. You know, something like that. And then it goes to... Very similar melodies, I probably just changed a few notes. This is an example of how ambivalent this soundtrack is. Throughout these 60 tracks, there are so many twists and turns and such mastery of music, Lena Rain is like a red mage of music. She goes incredibly light and happy and incredibly dark and creepy very quickly. Super cool. Last soundtrack I want to talk about is from a game that I hold very dear to my heart. The thing I love about this game is that it takes place in Tokyo in the modern day. So the soundtrack is essentially mainstream music that makes you headbang like crazy. <laughs> I love it so freaking much. Like, it's so refreshing to hear mainstream-ish type of music inside video games. The thing I love about this one is that the soundtracks for The World Ends With You tend to have lyrics that are kind of relatable for the type of person who is represented by the protagonist. So when I played the original, I was like 15 years old, which is the same age as Neku was. So when I heard the music, I was like, wow, this is music that talks about me in a, in a weird way. So I ended up really loving those songs. Now I'm kind of older, so I cannot relate as much, but it's still, you know, lights something in me when I hear this stuff. Another thing that I love a lot, this soundtrack from Takeharu Ishimoto is a huge collaborative project because there's so many different singers. For example, this one from Storm. is very different from Steph Topalian who sang on this song. And there's some recurring singers, but for the most part, they change on every track. And so in this soundtrack, you're gonna find some voice that you really love and you really identify with and there's gonna be some tracks that stay in your heart no matter who you are because it's so diverse. One of the tracks that I really loved is called Breaking Free. <laughs> I love it because it says the title of the game at the end but it kind of sounds like this. Again, maybe not very relatable anymore for me at my age. I can imagine myself at 15 being like, yes, this song gets me. Now I'm, you know, this is a bit too dramatic in terms of lyrics, but holy shit, the execution, this singer is so good. But what I love so much about this soundtrack is that it sounds like an album that comes with a free game because there's a diversity of genres, which is huge. And when you take these songs and you stripe them down of their rock or EDM or techno or funky flavor and genre, and you put them on a piano solo, they are still gonna sound quite interesting. Here, for example, is a small snippet of me singing Breaking Free on top of a piano that I wrote. I'm not as good as the singer <laughs> originally is, but just to give you an idea. good as the original singer but I try to keep the mood the same. At their core the World Ends With You soundtracks are very nice music pieces but then the added music production and vocals by super expert people really make them sound on par with music you would have heard on the radio. Maybe not nowadays because you don't hear rock music on the radio anymore, which makes me very sad. But back in, I don't know, 2003, 2005, this is something you could totally could have heard on the radio. But I appreciate the fact that this whole soundtrack is introducing people to the mainstream music because there's this weird divide. Sometimes gamers really don't like mainstream music and 
people who are a bit more normy or whatever don't like video game music and i think that's stupid people should like music because all music is beautiful anyway shout out to the amazing composer and musicians that wrote these soundtracks i recommend you to check them out in their full extent because they're great and i'll see you in the next video bye